Hi everyone, Coach Dustin here from KC Crease. I hope you're all doing fantastic. The battle between goaltenders and shooters is a never-ending cycle of learning what your opponent is doing and then implementing new strategies and techniques to temporarily gain the upper hand. A goaltender will debut a new save selection. Shooters will eventually figure out where the weak spots are, forcing the goalie to change their tactics. And as that battle plays out, we see certain save selections rise in popularity and others fall in popularity. For example, the RVH has gained tremendous popularity over the last few years, and while it's proven to be effective at jam plays and net front plays, wraparounds and things in tight, we've also seen that it's ineffective from greater distances out, unnecessarily exposing upper portions of the net. Goalies are beginning to account for the shooter's re recognition of the flaws of RVH. And while the VH save selection has taken a backseat in popularity over the last little while, we're starting to see more and more of it at the NHL level. And I wanted to share that today because it's a great reminder that every save selection has its ups and downs, and there's a time and a place for every save selection. And it's up to you as the goalie to figure out when those save selections are most appropriate to be used in your game. Today's clip features Corey Schneider of the New Jersey Devils, and he's going to make a save using the VH while shorthanded in overtime. I'm going to let the play roll, and then we'll go back and break it down. So as we start the PK, we can see quick read of where things are allows us as goaltenders to figure out where the play, or at least take a guess on where the play is going. We have one, two, three devils there. One, two, three, four lightning there. Now, judging from where the stick lanes are, we can see this stick lane is cut off. There's nothing in this lane. So at this point, with the puck here, Stamkos has two options. Shot to the net or pass to Kucherov. Considering who the personnel are, neither one is a bad decision. But Stamkos is going to elect to pass off to Kucherov. And as that pass comes across, we move it forward to the point of release there. And let's zoom in. As we can see, as the pass is coming across, Schneider beats the pass on his feet. Tremendously important. The longer you hold your feet, the longer you hold the advantage. But we get to our point of release here. Now we can take a look at what exactly Kucherov has to shoot at, as well as what Schneider needs to protect. So if we draw our lines from the corners to the point of release, Let's get that a little bit more accurate. Details make the difference. We have a rough approximation of our box here. We'll use the green line to represent what Schneider's blocking. Move that up just a touch. Make sure that's parallel with the posts and the crossbar. Down to the ice, across, and down. So we can see here that while we believe and we can see net space here in the green circle, we have to remember that our camera is not directly behind the puck, and so our view of what's available versus what's not available is slightly distorted. So let's keep that in mind as we move forward. But if we remove that green circle, we can see that there's two open net spaces, one here on the five hole and a tiny space here under the glove, next to the post, and by the pad. Otherwise, Schneider has this area more or less blocked off at the point of release using the VH. Any shots outside of this box are not on goal, so therefore this hole we see on the back side, not really there. Same thing with this here, and again this here. Now it's important to note that as our camera is going to move forward slightly, it will move on a horizontal plane, but not a vertical plane. So we'll still have a fairly decent understanding of where the top of the net is. Now in this case, we're going to draw a blue line right here next to the top of Schneider's glove as we're going to have to eliminate all this other stuff as the play moves forward frame by frame here. So keep your eyes on the top of Schneider's glove in that same spot. We'll draw another blue line there to mark it. And as we move forward slowly here, we can see that 
Schneider has completely shut down that available space and that puck is actually somewhat over or on the crossbar. So a fantastic example here from Schneider of A, understanding what available net space Kucherov has to shoot at and protecting the necessary elements. And then B, choosing a save selection to maximize that space that he needs to cover. Had he dropped into an RVH here, there likely would have been more space available in this area, potentially making that a goal or at least opening up a little more hole for the shooter. Doesn't catch it, but still a fantastic play. We zoom out a little bit. Same thing. So, again, the RVH is a fantastic save selection, and I'm not bagging on it. It has its time and its place, as does a VH, as does standing, or a half butterfly, or really any other save you can think of. They all have their time and place. Your job is to work with your coaching staff, your goalie coaches, and talk with your defenders to understand what shots are going to be taken from what spot and what everyone's trying to accomplish, and then implement the best save selection that allows you the best chance of success in that given situation. I hope that you found this video helpful. As always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them below or comments. You can also email me your questions and comments at kccrease at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow Casey Crease on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, in addition to here, my YouTube channel. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you in the crease.